This is Pastor Omar coming to you today. Today is Tuesday, so it's Table Talks with Pastor Omar. And today I have been blessed with some serious, serious Table Talks with my children. It has been a wonderful time of uh, reflection and thinking. One of the main things that came to my mind today uh, started with early this morning. I was on my, um, I was checking my phone and I found this uh, in one of the programs that I was looking at. It said this, by creating, posting, distributing, sending, or displaying user-generated content defined as messages, data, information, text, music, sound, photographs, and graphic images, illustrations, drawings, designs, drawings, icons, sounds, music, audio-visual files, and content and other material and items on or through the site you hereby grant to um, this company and its licensee a non-exclusive royalty, free, perpetual, transferable, irrevocable, fully paid up, worldwide, and sub-licensable right to use, copy, reproduce, modify, adapt, translate, distribute, publish, create, derivate, works of displays, perform, disclose, or incorporate into other works the and otherwise exploit the user-generated content for any purpose whatsoever in any medium, whether now, known, or hereafter created, and to use your name in connection with such user-generated content, and you hereby are you and you hereby represent and warrant that. I looked at that and said, what in the world is going on? Here's the thing. Today's worldwide talk is table talk is about uh, what I have terms and conditions. When I when I was looking at that, I realized that uh, many of you, maybe if you here, you're watching this. I hope that when you catch this on a replay, you'll be able to take a good look at that. I know if you saw what I was reading from, the print was tight. It was small. It was on black and white. It was not really easily able to be read. And that thing was blowing my mind. Because for most of the time, I talk to my children about this. Let me flip the thing. I talk to my children about this. Most of the time, we do not read the terms and conditions of most of the things that are, we are encounter on the digital media. What we do is we, you know, we have a program. We want to get to it. We want to get to that program now. And when we go to that program, we want to get to that program now. And then all of a sudden we realize that, man, what did I just do? I just signed the terms and conditions. It just says check the box. And I remember I was working with my children sometime. And they, they, you know, my children are in a hurry. They, they are the, a part of the microwave generation. They want their food. They want it in less than three minutes. They want everything fast, fast, fast. So, you know, I was working with them. They said, go ahead, just, just click, click yes. Just, go, just click, click yes. Just click agree, agree, agree. And I realized, I said, I don't know how long I've been doing that or you've been doing that. Have you ever got to a program, and when you got to that program, while you were putting that program on, especially in the social media, you just clicked on the terms and agreement without even thinking about it? In fact, without even reading the content of the material, I know I've been guilty of that. And if you've been guilty of that, you would be able to share some love on that and say, hey, I've done that. But here's the thing. I didn't realize that when I was doing that, I was signing away my right to my data. All the stuff that I was sending. So that means any photos, any kind of digital data, any text, any kind of thing that I put, any kind of post that I put up on that particular social media, they can use it. The, the people who run that social media can use it any way they want perpetually without me saying a word because I agreed to that in the beginning of this whole thing. So yeah, we all want privacy, but anytime we put anything on social media, it, it is no longer privacy. Hold up, let me just tell you who I am. I'm Pastor Omar Muhammad. I'm a proactive agent of change who communicates so that others might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. Today, I'm working on the issue of being um, liberated, being free. Free to do what? Free to read the terms and conditions. Stop rushing into these social media uh, outlets without even checking in to see if anything's good. So here, today, at this table talk, I was talking to one of my, one of my sons, and I said, Hey, dude, I said, do you ever read those terms and conditions? He said, no. I said, why not? He said, man, I don't, I don't really even care about that. You know, that's, that's too much time. I ain't I even thinking about that. And then he said, and then he, after a while, he thought about it for a little while and thought about it. and said, wait a minute. You know what? One time I read one for this new um, organization. I think it's called Snapchat. He said, I read those things, and that wasn't good. 
I said, you read it? And it wasn't good. He said, no. He said, man, you just give up all your rights to your, your social media. Give up your rights to your thoughts, to your posts, to your pictures, to all those things that you put up there. And I was like, mm-hmm. I said, I know, because I read one today. And that thing messed with me all day. It's been bothering me that all this time I've been giving up my rights and my privileges to all these kind of things. Here's one of the things that has to do with this whole social media thing. And I've been trying to teach my sons about it and my daughter and anybody who would listen to me, especially young people. Social media is not private. By nature, it is public. And anything you put on social media is subject to someone taking that. If Actually, it's recorded somewhere. And it's subject to someone taking it and attaching your name to it and using it later on in life. So instead of us people doing those, when they do these um, so kind of uh, uh, job check or job search to see what kind of person you are, they can find you on there. If you're one of them people that's always turning up, they can find you on the social media and pull it out. When you're going for that, that good government job, you think everything's good, they go up and find your Snapchat thing and find you up there turning it up, drinking, turning the bottle up, smoking, whatever, doing, doing something that you wouldn't want your mama to see because that's why you're on that particular medium instead of on the more, the older, you know, they, they, the young people tell me that, Facebook is for old folk, and it might be true. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, but I do know this, that sometimes we have to be mindful of what we are putting on these social media ne networks and realizing that that kind of stuff can be put brought into court and used against you. You know, you, I think you heard about the time when they were talking about um, all these people were recording cell phone conversations and um, all the government had to do was sign it up, boom, tell them we want that, that, that conversation, and they can... Um, they can get that information in there, whatever you were talking about. And we could have been private with you and your boo. <laughs> but it was now, it's public information because you texted it, you tweeted it, you put it out on some kind of social media. So I want you to be free today. I want you to understand that that is not the way. Welcome, this is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I saw you sign on. I'm your proactive agent of change who communicates that other people might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. Today's table talk is stemming from something that happened to me early in the morning. I was looking at a program by um, the, the maker of my phone, and it had the beautiful Rihanna on it, and it was talking all this kind of stuff, and it had this strange statement on it that messed with my mind. That's what made me look at it real closely. The statement started with this. It said, a beautiful prison blinds a beautiful a beautiful prison blinds and it's, a, it's it's their program called anti diary and i was like what is a beautiful prison and I, and I and i was like they must have some kind of situation in my mind you know my mind started to think i said a bru a beautiful prison what is that some kind of trap and I, you know, I, I, I maintain this. I'm gonna put this out there. I'm gonna put this on another one. I'll probably freestyle a little bit later. But I maintain that the World Wide Web, www, is a powerful tool. For some, the World Wide Web is just that, a trap. And for others, it's a tool. It comes from the concept of a well, a web, and this internet comes from the from the concept, the natural concept of a spider. A spider, a wise spider, builds a web, and that web is a tool for him. But for the prey, for the person they're trying to catch up in that web, it is a trap. For that fly, that little thing that under, under, just run into there not knowing what's going on, they get trapped. And so what I'm seeing is the connection between that concept and what's going on today. This beautiful prison was it actually took about, about an hour of my time just trying to figure out what it was. When I got in there, there were some beautiful pictures, gold. They had the beautiful Rihanna in there. All kind of stuff in there. I was using the phone. And I was lifting it around. And it shows you all different parts of the room. It was a beautiful trap to steal my time, to take my time away, and it did. That time I usually reserved for God in the morning. I don't know what happened. I just picked up my thing. I saw the text. So it, was a, it was a tweet. I saw the tweet. It was a strange thing. I went into it, and it just kept on taking me down the rabbit hole, and it had me hooked and transformed for a while. And it almost got me all the way up until the point where I had, it had me do this thing, with, with the terms and agreements. If you press these terms and agreements, you can go further in the program. And I was like, wait a minute. Today, I don't know what made me do it, but I stopped to read the terms and conditions. My mind was so blown by what it said that all the rights and privileges that it said. Now, now for, for the company, it was talking about, oh, we protect the right. You can't look at our stuff. You can't re-engineer it. You can't copy anything off of it. You can't take anything from it. You can't change it or modify it anyway. You can't do any of those kind of things. That's what it said for the company. But for me and you, the user, it said we can take all your stuff, put your name on it, use it any way we want, to put anything we want, attach it to your name always, perpetually, forever and ever, going on and on and on. And you know this digital stuff is going to be around for a long time. So I was like, what the, what the what? <laughs> what the what? What is going on here? 
How do we do this? How have we kept on doing this over and over and over again? Think about how many times you just signed the terms of agreement. You just hit that check. You just hit that thing. You didn't even want to read it because they make it so ugly. You don't want to read it at all. It's a crazy situation. But that situation is designed to turn you into somebody else's business. Your, your personal, private, wonderful pictures is turned into somebody else's business. It's not yours anymore. As soon as you upload it, as soon as you post it, it's no longer yours. It said, when you look a little bit further, that you have the right. But they said they can do whatever they want with what you posted. So I'm like, what? Uh. So here's the thing, my friend. When I say keep your hands clean and your heart pure, this is what I mean. I knew from the beginning that my concept about the World Wide Web, that it is either a trap for the unaware and a tool for the wise, I knew that going in. So the very first day I went on Facebook, you can go all through my Facebook, you can read, I don't care what you do, you can look, because all of my mind is on about, I put, out, I put out what I want to communicate. I am a communicator who communicates that others might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. All through my stuff. And if, if you see pictures of me and my family, it's about the upliftment of the family and family values. If you see pictures of my, and I tried, and I protected my children for a long time. For a long time, you wouldn't even see my children's name until they got of age when they started getting on the internet themselves because I was covering them. I'm protecting them. And still today, sometimes I don't even call their name because I don't want them to be just on blast like that because we give up the rights and privileges to people when we do that. We have to be mindful of that. So, so I say the only protection in this kind of society that we're in, the only way we can be protected ensure that what comes up in the later won't be come back to bite us in the butt uh, or knock us out of a job or mess up, us up is that we have an understanding of the game before we get into the game. No going in. So I hope that my children, my grandchildren, when they go into the uh, digital media, when they look up my archive file, they will be able to say, this is what granddaddy Yahya's son was talking about. This is what um, Pastor Omar or or Yaso, or wherever one of the names that you use, because I have um, different names that I use to reach out to different people. But this is what he was talking about. Keep your hands clean and your heart pure, so that when the enemy comes, I'm, I'm like being like Jesus. Like he said, man, I, you know, I'm here doing what I do. When, the devil is coming, when he, but when he comes, he won't find anything in me. He won't find anything that he can just use against me. So anything I'm doing, I can at least stand up for. And let me tell you, I'm not perfect. I don't have everything always right. I don't always do right. Sometimes I, I act the fool. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm in my flesh. Sometimes I'm just doing stuff that I ain't got no business doing. But I try to make sure I'm conscious and aware of where I am. Because we're in a new day. You know, you go out there, you're going to be doing some sneak tip. You think you're going somewhere. You might be in Long Beach and you live in, in, in Gardena. You think somebody going not going to see you in Long Beach. As soon as you get there and you're doing some clandestine dark stuff, somebody going to got you on Facebook. Pew, got you on, on Twitter. Pew. Everywhere you go, there are cameras everywhere. Everywhere you go. You think you're walking down the street just doing something. Everywhere you go, there's cameras everywhere watching us. So what is our only defense? Clean hands and a pure heart, my friend. I'm coming back to this theme, but how I got here was this. We need to stop being so quick to click on those things. We need to say, listen, this is what it is. It is, it is serious, and we need to know about it. The terms and conditions, we need to read about it and know that we're able to deal with it. How are you going to be able to handle that? You're going to keep your hands clean and your heart pure. Your hands is what you do. So whatever you, whatever you, when you turn it up, make sure you turn it up in the righteous way. And make sure, because somebody in that party might be Snapchatting you. Somebody in that party might be, uh, whatever they get, whatever the big thing is going to come up next one, they're going to show it, they're going to put it on there, and then you're going to be looking like Boo Boo the Fool because you turned up, and that is forever in your records. My friend, my, my beloved brother and sister, please hear Pastor O today. Now, I know my wife does not like me getting into these realms because you know what? Sometimes there's repercussions for these realms. But I am a liberator. I, what does it say? I'm a proactive agent of change who communicates that others might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. I don't want you to be in bondage by your old stuff that when you were a child. When I was a child, I did some raunchy, some, some, some raunchy stuff, but it wasn't on Facebook. It wasn't on stuff, so I'm so glad for that. I don't know what my children are going to have to deal with as they're growing up. That stuff might come back, you know, they might look at it and say, oh yeah, you want this job? Yeah, but uh, have you ever smoked? Have you ever did this? Have you ever done? No, 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 no. Well, you know, and you, you think you're getting away with it? They just pull it up. Well, this is what you did on this place, and this is where you were or that place, and this is what you were. So, I'm um, sorry, buddy. We, you thought you had a job, but you don't because you don't have integrity. You're not telling the truth. So, whatever you do, own up to it. 
had clean hands and a pure heart. That's one of my table talks uh, discussions today. The other thing was just mind blowing all by itself because I have on there um, um, boys in skirts. Yeah, well, I heard about one of my one of my one of my um, you know iconic um, figures that I love much. I even love this young man's music. That he is going to be wearing. Um, he's going to be the national model for some for some. Um, I think it's a. A French company, Louis Vuitton. He, Louis Vuitton. Thank you for good. And he's gonna be wearing female clothes. Now, me and my boys, we had a discussion about it. You know, I told them this is what it, this is how I roll. This is how our family roll. I am raising up straight boys and girls, and I am believing that that's the deal, and that's how we're gonna flow. And I told them that if as they get older, if they went another way, I will always love them for all my days. But here's the goal. Here's how, you know, it says, as for me in my house, I will serve the Lord. Here's the goal. My goal is to raise up godly children who raise up godly children. And that forever, I, on, my, on my family, when I have my um, mission, it's, it says that we, that we will be a proactive agent of change and we will be God lovers all the days of our life from generation to generation. They will find someone in our family who just, just, just in love with God. I'm like that, my wife like that, and I believe my children, they've been growing up in this environment to be like that. And I'm trying to show them a God that loves and that has compassion. So it kind of upset me when my brother called me and said, man, did you hear about what's happening with, with such and such son? He said, no. He said, that boy is getting ready to go out and put on dresses for and be the national spokesman for girl lines of clothes. And I was like, man, I felt, I felt, I felt kind of bad. Because I do know that there's some companies and there's some places who just exploit young people. They show boys and, un and compromising and girls in compromising p p positions and it's just not good. And it causes other people to look upon them as, as instruments and objects of sex and other things rather than as the God created being that they were created to be. And so my sons had a, a decent argument. They were like, Daddy, you know, y'all old folk. We're going to have to change the whole program. We're going to have to flip the script on it. We're going to be because we want to be able to wear um, dresses and skirts whether we want to or not. And I'm like, hey, that might work out. That's good. But this particular society right now is not quite ready for it. They ain't even ready for my scars. I mean, I'll be trying to rock a scarf. People be like, what's up with Brother Omar? Pastor Omar, he little sugar in his, whatever, whatever. But you know what? I, so I do understand my son's sentiment because I am one of those brothers. I push it. But I push it for righteousness. You're going to see a man up in this scarf. You're going to see a man who loves God, loves his wife, and want to promote family wherever he goes. And I'm not saying that there's other, form, there's other formulation of family. But you want to ask me what I believe? Look at what I'm doing. That's how I'm flowing. That's how it's going. So this is some deep stuff. I wish it was an interactive time that we could talk about it. But I hope that maybe you hit me up on some of my other social medias and say, you know what, Pastor? Oh, I saw your, your broadcast. It was thought-provoking. I don't like it. You know, whatever. Let's interact. Let's have a dialogue. And I'll bring it back to the table. And we are, we'll talk about it together. I love my sons and my daughters with all my heart, mind, and soul. I pray that they will go and do the work that they do. I know that they're here to do great work. And there's probably going to be some stuff. They always challenge me to think again. So I'm thinking again, I'm thinking about the freedom and the liberty that we have to do what we want. And I'm also thinking about the cultural norms and, 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 and mores that we have in this society. And I'm praying that we will be in a world that my son can be a straight man and wear a dress if he want to. But here's the issue. I was deeply disturbed because I'm thinking about how it impacts the African-American role model and image. On the one hand, if you're a strong black man, you look like a, you could be looking like you could be a 13 year old kid who has a play gun and get up and people see you standing up set five feet seven and shoot you down and kill you because they see a menace to society. They see a person that's scared, they're scared of and they want to kill him. So on the one side, that if you are, if you stand up and be a bold black man, you can be killed and murdered for that. On the other side. They got men who would, who, in my opinion, are not allowed to have great success unless they put on a dress. In my day, it was um, Flip Wilson. And you just go on down the line and see whoever else you want to put in that list. Martin Lawrence. Who, who else you want to put in that list? Tyler Perry. You want to put anybody else in that list? You just keep going on and on and on and on and on. And they became big successes, but they had to wear that dress. Oh, it's not just us. Oh, oh, Robin Williams, he had to put on the dress too. But whatever that is, I'm sorry, y'all got me out here now. This is supposed to be Freestyle Friday kind of stuff, but here it is. This is the table talk.
So I want to lift up the spirit. I want to say to my son, I love you. I want to say to young people out there, I love you. I know y'all, you guys are in some, a, a real transforma transformative time. And I'm a part of that transformation. I'm doing what I can to be a transforming agent. A proactive agent of change is what I am. But now I do want you to understand, I love you. And I want you to be wise when you get on this social media. I want you parents to be wise when you get on the social media. I don't want you to put up anything that you're going to be ashamed of or, or going to feel like it doesn't fit for you when you come back into this, uh, uh, when you see it again. If your mother can't see you doing it, if you don't want your mother and father to see you doing that, then don't put it on social media. Don't record that kind of stuff. Don't put that stuff out there. It is not good. It is not healthy for you. So this is what I want you to do. Interact with me. Dialogue with me. So I can bring it to this thing. Because this, this thing that I have, this Periscope broadcast, it is about truth and confronting truth. It is about being who you are. It is about finding your place so you can be, you can be healed. Healed emotionally. Healed spiritually. So that you can be healed. So that you can be um, liberated. You can be free to be who you're called to be. And so that you can be appreciated. I appreciate you with all my heart. I appreciate my children. And I said, please, tell me what you're thinking about. Don't sit in there and not tell me. And they, they corrected me. They said, man, we don't know if we can talk to you because you got them old school ways. But I said, listen, son, I'm growing. I'm learning. Some things I learned from you. Some things you will learn from me. Let us, let us share the wealth. Because what I understand is that if we, if we cut off the elders from the young people and they don't get any of our wisdom, then they have to start all over again. It retards our whole community. It retards our whole neighborhood. It retards our whole nation if the young people stop talking to the old people. If the old people stop talking to the young people. So we got to be engaged. We got to be in dialogue. I thank God for the liberty and freedom that God has given me. Although I'm not fully employed, I am fully invested in the lives of my children. Talking with them, sharing with them, learning from them, learning from them from play. Learning from them in discussion. And thank God right now we're still able to talk. And I pray that we will always be able to do that. So I've learned a lot from them. I hope you understand. Big up to my, my, my number one, number two, number three, and my number four. I thank you for uh, taking the time to listen to me. I pray that you would share this with other people. Engage in dialogue. Engage in conversation. And so that other people might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. Well, this is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I'm out of here. Now, my phone does this little kind of crazy thing of dreaming. As I try to um, exit out of this, uh, out of this periscope, I'm going to let you see the dreams of my phone. All right. I love you. This is Pastor Omar. Keep your hands clean and your heart pure. I'm out.